with CPAP becoming a very popular tool, not only at the ALS level, but at the basic level as well, we need to understand how to use CPAP and how to properly identify how our CPAP is doing on these patients. So let's get into this quick little article about how to use capnography in order to titrate your CPAP so we can better take care of our patients. So a few weeks ago, we talked about CPAP as a whole. Kevin did a whole video on this for you guys. And if you wanna check that one out, go ahead and hit the link that we put down in the description for you to check out that entire video on the GEMS uh, website. So that way you can really get a good idea of what CPAP is. And now we can start getting into some of the details of CPAP and how we can use them to better ben or more benefit our patient. So let's check this out. So first off, we need to discuss kind of what the whole purpose of CPAP is. And the whole purpose of CPAP is is to improve ventilation. Okay, improve ventilation. And what we're trying to do with CPAP with these patients that have COPD, uh, pulmonary edema, people that have pneumonia due to and have pulmonary edema with that and have poor ventilation status, all those types of patients could have a problem with ventilation. And that is all due to the fact that we have poor compliance or poor abilities with either our bronchioles, more commonly with COPD. So COPD is gonna hit up in here, okay, in the bronchioles. And then we're gonna have more of our pulmonary edemas and our pneumonias. They're gonna hit more here, okay? pulmonary edemas and pneumonias are gonna hit down in here within the alveoli itself. Now, the reason that CPAP is used in these particular situations is because it doesn't matter where we have the injury, whether it's COPD affecting the bronchioles or pulmonary, um, pulmonary edema and pneumonia is affecting the alveoli. The truth of the matter is, is that what we need to do with both of these is improve ventilation, either by stenting open these bronchioles and improving positive end expiratory pressure, or what we call PEEP, okay? And PEEP is simply that pressure that's gonna be putting against the alveoli in order to keep them stinted open, in order to reduce surface tension. So that's essentially what we're doing, regardless if it's COPD, by opening these bronchioles and making sure we get enough pressure into the alveoli to keep them open, or if it's a pulmonary um, edema or pneumonia that's already fluid filling these alveoli, the positive end expiratory pressure excess amount within the alveoli will actually keep the fluid out of the alveoli and hopefully improve diffusion, improve ventilation that way. So CPAP can have a great effect on both of those situations. Okay. So let's talk about the, the biggest things too, is about when it comes to COPD, typically when it comes to end tidal CO2, we're going to see higher levels of end tidal CO2. Remember the higher it goes, the more the poorer the ventilations are. And so anything that's kind of above 70 millimeters of mercury for um, when it comes to end tidal CO2 is considered impending respiratory failure. And so that's something that we'll see in COPD. It's something that we can see in pulmonary edema and pneumonias as well, simply because of the decrease in ventilation status, okay? And so having a, you know, a 70 is telling us we have an impending respiratory failure. And so we're gonna try and get CPAP on these patients prior to this number, uh, simply because the higher they go, the more fatigued they get, the less likely CPAP is going to work. And so we wanna try and catch them before they get here. So that way they no longer are in respiratory failure and they start to improve their ventilation. So that's something to keep in mind when it comes to CPAP, use it early, use it aggressively uh, when you can and try and catch them before they end up in respiratory failure. So that way we have the best chance of success with this patient. So that is that. Now, another little tidbit to keep in mind as well, when it comes to COPD, when you add CPAP to these patients, you'll tend to see that CO2, the, as the ventilation improves, you'll see that CO2 go lower and lower and lower and improvements on your patient quite rapidly. You'll see them within the two to three minutes. 
However, when it comes to pulmonary edema and pneumonias, we'll tend to see those improvements uh, a lot slower, more kind of around the eight to 15 minute mark. And so just because you put the CPAP mask on and you don't see an immediate reaction with these patients, it could be simply the pathology that you're seeing and you're dealing with here is that we see quite a bit of difference in improvement in speed of improvement to put between COPD and more of our fluid alveoli based types of uh, pathology when it comes to decreases in ventilation. Now, coming back to the initial topic is, how are we going to actually get a good um, reading of end tidal CO2 if we're using CPAP? Because what we know is by using one of these uh, side stream CPAPs is, or end tidal CO2s, we're not getting a very good reading because all of the positive pressure of oxygen that's coming by here is simply skewing that result completely. There's just no way that we're going to get a good result with our end tidal CO2 by using a side stream type on our CPAP masks. And so one thing that we should be doing in these situations is actually switching out this side stream one for a nasal cannula one. You may not see it in this video here, but there's a nasal cannula um, end tidal CO2 on this particular patient that's essentially reading it at the expirated level at the mouth as opposed to at the CPAP side. So that way we can still get a good reading of end tidal CO2 on this particular patient. And that's an important piece to understand is that how do we really know if our CPAP's working? Well, we need to know if our ventilations are improving. The best way to determine if our ventilations are improving is to monitor the end tidal CO2. We can't do it with this tool, but we can certainly do it with a nasal cannula type end tidal CO2 with the pillow underneath the lip there. That is a much better design for what we have at stake here. And it's the best way to determine how good our CPAP is doing. A lot of people are talking about, well, what about the seal that uh, that's broken if we have the entitled CO2 underneath kind of around the cheeks area? And the answer is that honestly, we have more than enough positive pressure that typically that seal is doing just fine. And also when we actually have the patient in an upright position and those soft uh, structures and skin structures aren't slothing back like you typically see on a patient that's more supine, uh, we tend to have a fine seal there. And so we don't really have a whole lot of problem with that um, just because we'll actually seal around those hoses. And again, the increased amount of pressure within the, uh, the CPAP line itself tends to be more than enough even if you do have a slight leak. And so that is how you actually are determining your end tidal CO2 uh, with using a CPAP mask is switching out your side stream tube style uh, end tidal CO2 and going with a nasal cannula pillow type in order to determine how good your CPAP is doing. Hey, thanks so much for checking out this video. Hopefully you really enjoyed it. This, uh, my name's Jeff again with Master Medics. If you haven't heard from me before, we're doing these videos with GEMS, the Emer Journal of Emergency Medical Service on a regular basis, every single Monday. So make sure you're following us. Make sure you check out that article on the GEMS magazine. It's a great little article that really kind of kind of breaks down the understanding of why we see these pillow type end tidal CO2s are better than the side streams for this particular application in CPAP and it gives us a much better and numeric indication of how good our CPAP is doing for these particular patients. So make sure you check out that article and make sure you follow us so you can see the rest of these videos every single Monday. See you next time.